Hey there everyone, it's Nigel here again from the Nigel's Modelling Bench. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, before we get going, please like and subscribe and hit that notifications bell so that you get alerts when I uh, when I put a fresh video up, which is, I try and do one pretty much every day. So what we're going to do today, we're going to do an unboxing of this um, pretty old kit now. This is the uh, Hobby Boss 132nd scale Spitfire Mic 5B. Um, my plan is to do this an out of the box build and video it. Um, not a hundred percent video the whole thing like uh, like scale model aircraft does, but um, yeah, just just do a, a video with, with you know segments showing you as as we go through the stages. Um, and my plan is to do it as I say out of the box, no modifications, no aftermarket, nothing. Just out of the box, just the model in this in this box with its decals and paint. Nothing else. <laughs> um, I know I keep saying that, and uh, I, I, I will do that one day, and I intend to do it with this one. So there we go, it's a 2010 kit. Um, so we're showing the um, two different uh, sides there for the, um, that's the box front livery. And then we've got the end, there's kit number 83205. This is the version I'll be doing, uh, which is in the um, earth and uh, green colour. And uh, 1943 Les Cassin. So um, yeah, I, uh, I do like a Spitfire in the earth and, and green. It, it just it looks right. So what have we got in here? We got a lovely usual Hobby Boss. You know, nice strong box. None of your Revell soft end opening stuff. Um, so in the box we've got uh, sprue there with wings. So there's one. There's two with fuselage halves. The usual Hobby Boss. You know, trumpeter, beautiful protection in there. So there's two, three, four, five, six, seven sprues, a small fret of PE, which is belts, and I'm guessing that's these are going to be intakes or something, and I don't know what that piece there is going to be. Um, and then we've got this piece on the end, which has got our clear parts. And some more clear parts here. Looks like these are gun covers, which is unusual. So you can actually have the, the covers on, but um, display the display the guns. And then we've got our vinyl tires there. So I'll get all this unbagged, and uh, and we'll have a look through the sprues. Right, let's start off by having a look at the instructions then. Um, we've got a 12-page booklet here with 11 steps to build the model. Uh, on the front cover, we've got our box front health and safety. Um, legend for different symbols used through throughout the construction and how to apply our decals or decals or water slide transfers or whatever you want to call them. So going into the front of the book here we've got our um, sprue call out which has got all our, uh, it's all numbered and everything. Decals, photo etched tyres and everything on there so you can check all your parts are present. And then we're going into the assembly of the cockpit. Um, and here they're, I see they're telling us to paint the seat green. I think you'll find that's supposed to be red, so I'll have to do some research on that. Um, cockpit's going together, looks quite nice. It's not as detailed as the as the Tamiya kit, or the Tamiya Spitfire. I don't think Tamiya do a Mark V, do they? Um, but, you know, for, for a third of the price, who's complaining? And we've got an engine, full engine going together there. Um, I must admit, it doesn't look much like a Merlin to me, but, uh, you know, <laughs> let's, let's see. Um... Undercarriage here, and then we've got our gun covers going on. Uh, I think, as we said earlier, they're clear parts. I'll do some drilling here, adding the machine guns into the um, into the, the bottom of the wing there. And then we've got some more guns. I guess they're three o threes, are they? Um, and then we're adding the tops of the wings, ailerons. I'm not sure if they're movable or just positionable, or even just separate. And then we've got our <clears throat> cockpit sidewalls there going in, uh, radio equipment in the back, all sat on a nice framework. It's all there, isn't it? It's all, um, it's all in there. Um, fuel tank going on here. And then we've got the bulkheads, um, tail wheel there with its little bulkhead. And then, uh, oh, I see, I'm, I'm, that's good. So you can actually build this tail wheel up. And then actually put the wheel in afterwards because it's actually got its own little axle, so that's handy. Um, and then we've got the tail planes going together there. Um, 
I don't know why that's ribbed. That should be riveted. We'll see in a minute in the plastic. Um, and then we've got our exhaust there going on, side covers. I think I'll be gluing those on, looking at that engine, we'll see. Um, and then we've got a separate cockpit door there so we can have that open or closed. And then we've got canopy going on, adding the fuselage onto the wing. Putting our oil coolers and radiators in the bottom. Uh, P-top tube. And then adding our undercarriage. And then over the page, building up our prop spinner and a little £250 bomb to go on the bottom. So yeah, so there we are. So that's the instructions taken care of. All sort of basically plain and simple. Um, we've got a, a colour call out here for our um, for all our colours. And there's the the green and sea grey version, which I won't be doing. And then here's the uh, <clears throat> earth and green one. I will be doing. So we've got uh, Mr. Hobby Viejo. Model Master, Tamiya and Humbrol um, colour callouts there which is nice better than you get these these days when you've got the one the one bought in company um, and also unusually you've got the full range of Tamiya colours there normally there's, there's gaps in there you know like, like here you've got the gaps so uh, yeah it'd be interesting to see what colours they are and if they're uh, actually close to what they should be um, if you're building this as a as a beautiful model then Probably best go for the real colours, the AK real colours, I recommend them highly. And um, yeah, they go down beautifully and they mix beautifully with uh, Mr. Carroll Leveling Thinners. The decals here, so we've got the main sheet here. Now, I don't know if this is common with Hobby Boss, but if you look at my decals, they, the paper here was kind of stuck to them. As I say, it's a 2010 kit, so it may have been sat on a shelf for eight years or whatever. I know it's been in my shelf for, for a while. Um, so yeah, so there we go. There's the uh, the decals. And looking nice. They're all in register. Colours look good. Um, don't know about the... Um, you know, how translucent the white will be. Maybe paint some white circles under them before they're put on. But uh, yeah, got the Polish markings there. So obviously this is the version I'll be doing. Um, and then we've got our general markings here and stencils, and they're all readable. Sorry, flashing lights. And then we've got a small <coughs> decal sheet here, which is the, uh, the little Donald Duck type symbol, um, a coloured flash, and the instrument panel. And we've got some more Polish markings there. Again, all in register. Nice, very nice. So clear parts, um, <clears throat> I've opened this but I'm going to put it straight away again so nothing gets scratched. So we've got our canopy there which is very, very nice and if I get something with writing on, we can see how much distortion we get in this and you can see it's really, really nice. So they are lovely and clear. Pretty much distortion free and uh, yeah gorgeous there's a little scuff on that one I believe that's going to want to polish but um yeah lovely let's get these some um, protected straight away I love the way they do this you know you've got kit manufacturers 2019 you know, kit manufacturers that still just chuck everything in a bag you know Airfix our favorite for it um, and then you get manufacturers who just chuck everything in a box like that HK Lancaster. And then you've got other manufacturers like Hobby Boss and Trumpeter that really take some time and care and package their models beautifully with things like this protective foam and you know these cardboard inserts in the boxes and stuff, separators. So yeah, that's all lovely. And then we've got another sprue of clear parts here, we'll get them out, and these are the, the gun covers on the wings. So uh They've made those clear so you can choose to choose to show the guns if you want to. Vinyl tires. You can see here they've got some um, got no real tread on them, which is nice. And then you've you've got a, a tiny little um mould seam that will just rub off easily. Um you may wish to replace those with resin wheels, there's millions available on the market. And then we've got a PE sheet here with the seat belts. 
um, and uh, yeah they're not the best but they'll do they're fine this is an out-of-the-box build remember um, so that's that for the little bits and pieces let's have a look at these major sprues so these are the uh, obviously the wing upper and lower surfaces um, we've got some lovely rivet detail on there really really nice rivet detail um, which isn't overdone at all we have got some sink marks across here so obviously on the back here yeah, there's a there's a rib there so that's um given us a sink mark on this side but you know it doesn't really matter it, it almost looks like a bit of a canning effect on there so that'll be okay and it won't even show under a coat of matte paint um under surface of the wing beautiful uh, take a wash really really nice sort of like a flory clay wash on there which would be really really nice um yeah really good Loads of ejector pin marks, obviously, but none of those are going to be seen as far as I know. Um, that one there might be. So, yeah, we've got some internal detail there for the wheel wells. And the uh, respective bulge above. Not sure if that's correct or not. Um, looks a little bit overdone, perhaps, but uh, I don't know. Again, I'll have to do some research. But um, there's bound to be some mistake with this kit. There always is. Um, there's going to be something wrong generally with the trumpeter hobby boss kits it's the nose shape that's out in my experience we've got fuselage halves here um, engine side covers top cover or oh, cowling and then we've got this access panel here which just goes in there instrument panel some greeblies for the interior antenna there and uh, yeah again lovely surface detail don't know about the accuracy but it's surface detail um, instrument panel there which is pretty nice so to tell you to put that decal on there uh, I don't think that's going to go down very well so probably best cut the um, instruments out of the decal and then um, and then add them that way put them in separately or use some aftermarket instruments which I have got but um, if I'm doing an out-of-the-box build, I'm not allowed to use them, am I? We've got a sprue here. This is sprue E. This is all the Greeblies. So we've got um, guns. Oh, they are slide moulded. Look at that. Got some uh, lovely detail on the ends of them. So, yeah, they're not open, so they'll need to be drilled out. We've got our ammo belts there. Um, that's ammo, ammo um, boxes. And then the actual main bodies of the machine guns, undercarriage legs, obviously plastic, no metal inserts in them, gear doors, they look a bit fictitious, I'm not sure if they're correct or not, but hey, who cares. Um, yeah, and then we've got our wheels there, which are pretty nice, wheel backs, don't forget to paint the inside of them black before you put them together, because you'll see through, yeah, really nice. And then we've got a small sprue here, which we've got our spinner, spinner back, um, belly of the um, cowling area, 250 pound bomb, and then the propeller hub, separate blades, and an air intake there, which is beautifully molded. It's really nice. And our prop blades, which are mostly done with the sprue connector points away from any visible surface, which is a, a good thing. Something other manufacturers should take note. Spinner looks very nice, not sure if its shape is correct, but it's nicely moulded. So yeah, and as I say with all my reviews, this is an out-of-the-box review, this is not a build review. So, you know, it could be the sharpest, most beautifully moulded kit in the world. If it doesn't go together, it doesn't go together. So, um, you know, this 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 only tells you what's on the sprues and, uh, and how nicely moulded it is. It doesn't cover accuracy or... Um, or uh, how well it goes together or engineering you can't you know you, you could I've done this with main kits and then you find that some of the engineering decisions have been a bit daft um, but here we've got our interior bulkheads there back of the seat headrest and then we've got the sides of the seat here the seat is actually made up as we saw in the instructions of, um, of quite a few little parts so it probably looked very impressive I'm, I'm assuming that the mark 5 had an aluminium seat rather than the um, 
than the Bakelite moulded one. So I'll have to do some research on that. As I said, it could be just they got the colour callouts and the instructions incorrect. So now moving on to our control surfaces. We've got, well, I think that's our flaps there. Um, is that flaps? That's ailerons. That's ailerons, that's the flaps there. Um, then we've got our rudder, uh, tail planes. This is interesting. One side is riveted, and the other side looks like fabric. I'm not sure if that's correct. In fact, I'm pretty sure that's not correct. Um, you've got oil tank there, radiator underneath, a couple of ejector pin marks inside that have to be sanded out, they're very shallow. Um, yeah, and as I say, we've got some pretty heavy detail on there to show the uh, the canvas um, cover on there, or canvas linen. Hmm. And we've got this sprue here with some of our detail parts. So we've got the uh, front cover off the engine, bulkhead here, this engine parts sump, sidewalls for the uh, cockpit. Uh, what's all this? We've got, oh, we've got ignition leads there, which is a nice touch. The engine mounts, the actual engine block itself. Oh dear, that doesn't look too good, does it? Um, and then we've got under here, I don't know what's under there. It's going to be something fragile. Yep, yeah, there's some uh, cooling pipes by the look of it. So yeah, it's all um, it's all very sharp and crisp, which is pretty nice. But uh, unfortunately, look at that engine block. That almost you know you almost expect to be putting a motor in that and a and an AA battery. <laughs> it doesn't look very good, does it? We can we will see. But for thirty quid, you know, and that's that's how much this model is these days. So there we have it. That is the Hobby Boss Supermarine Spitfire Mark 5B uh, 30 second scale kit and available from model shops everywhere and eBay and everything. So um, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and uh, I'll be doing a build of this very shortly. Bye bye.